And welcome to the Stan Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point to drop in every week. One in 88 children are diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. The developmental disorder impacts speech, social interaction, and sensory issues. A Hartford Robotics firm in conjunction with the University of Connecticut has developed a device it says will aid in the teaching of autistic children. We'll talk to Timothy Gifford, owner of Movia Robotics, and Anjana Bott, an assistant professor at UConn. We'll also talk to an autism awareness advocate about other new developments in Connecticut. Then we'll wrap things up with career counseling coach John Brubecker with the job market showing signs of coming back. He'll give his quick tips on how to ace that job interview. But first, a new learning tool for autistic children. Welcome aboard, folks. Uh, we have Timothy Gifford from Movia Robotics. Anjana, Anjana, but I, I practice this too, right? Isn't that something? I, I blew I it, huh? Close enough, it. right? Yeah. This is fascinating study. Now, you've now developed a device that you think will assist in autistic children learning and developing. How did it start? How did UConn and this robotics firm come together to even think about this? Well, originally we were looking at ways to do uh, collaborative robotics, social robotics, and seeing uh, what types of applications uh, that would be very useful. And we saw that uh, researchers were having good success working with kids with autism. And uh, how so? We see success. What were they seeing? What were they identifying? Well, what they were seeing was that the kids would engage uh, with the robots and were able to. Uh, do different uh, tasks with the robots that they would have trouble with uh, with other uh, therapists or other kids and the robots um, formed a uh, a bridge that enabled them to actually practice some of these skills. Uh, John, what did you see from your end as a UConn professor? Sure. I'm a pediatric physical therapist in terms of my clinical training. Mm. And during my research training at Johns Hopkins University, I learned that children with autism not only have social and communication difficulties, but they also have motor difficulties. So they have issues in terms of coordinating their movements, balance, um, imitating skills of others. And uh, when you look at autism treatments, the majority of treatments focus on language skills, uh, focus focus on academic skills, there are not a lot of treatments that focus on uh, perceptual motor skills in children. And so our main thrust in this NIH funded study has been to develop socially embedded movement games where children, two children work together or an adult and a child works together with a robot to engage in group activities. To model and to retain, right, these functions. Let's take a look and see on the video this in action. So what we're working on is collaborative robotics. And so we're building systems that enable robots and people to work together. We decided to work in autism because of its prevalence in the education system. The robots offer a social entity who is lower dimensional, simpler. So the cues that come from the robot are much easier to grasp. This is now, and he's from Aldebaran Robotics. So he's cleverly designed. They worked on aesthetics, and that's important to us because we want to use robots that teach kids about working with other people, and so a humanoid robot is helpful for that association. And then what we do is we go in and we write different programs to control the robot in basic ways that are useful in the therapy. So our software is really designed to be used by teachers and clinicians so that it's very simple. Let's pretend we work on a farm. Can you help me feed the chickens? Do it like this. Here, cheeky cheeky, get your yummy dinner. The robot can give very specific social cues in a very simple way. The child gets to recognize these cues with the robot and then generalize that to interactions with people. Oh no, it looks like the tracker is stuck. We need to pull on some ropes to pull it out of the mud. Okay, everybody grab a rope like this. So what we're finding is that we can use this application as a training tool to help to interact with kids with autism and to train them with specific tasks that they can use to interact in the real world. We did it. The tractor is out of the mud. 
We'll give them uh, skills such as uh, turn taking, imitation, uh, interpersonal coordination. These basic fundamental uh, skills can then help them to interact in more general ways that they can then change their quality of life with. All right, shot by Rich Benzino of the Hartford Current. Um, so now what are you finding? It's made, it's there. Do you have a name for the robot? Have you named it anything yet? Well, you gotta give it a name, right? It's uh, the robot that we're using now is a, a now from Aldebron Robotics, and we generally name it based on uh, where it's going to be. So sometimes we have one whose name is Chris, another whose name is Sam, and uh, it's interesting because the kids will uh, come up with a whole background story. Oh, really? Where the robot comes from? A little and bio, what it does huh? and come, <laughs> you know. as kids will do, right? So now, what are you finding when you use that with children? What are you finding? What are you pleased with, and where do you think you can continue to tweak this? The majority of work that we've done so far has been with typically developing children. We've seen a few children with autism, and what we've found is that children will improve their imitation skills and will also show increase in verbal communication. And this is uh, between the two children who are engaging with the robot. And these contexts um, involve the robot talking to the children or the robot becoming a topic of conversation for the children. And so we are hopeful that this will carry over to children with autism. We will do that study starting this summer and we'll know the results in two years. But we are hopeful that we'll be able to facilitate coordination as well as social skills, uh, as well as communication skills in children uh, with autism. For the autistic kid who is nonverbal, will this help? For parents out there who have a nonverbal child, will that be? Well, that's that's one of the things that we're looking at, and uh, a lot of the activities are movement-based. So, in terms of uh, their awareness of other people and empathy for other people, and then an understanding of timing. So, just understanding the timing of another person and how it relates to themselves. Right. So and that's a nonverbal. And activity. there are certain kids we know who are rambunctious, and they see a nice robot, and they're going to take it and look at it, and they may throw it. What about that kid who's a little bit destructive? How do you factor that in if that kid is not quite ready for a robot like that? Well, well, we work with different types of robots, so we have some uh, lower end ones that we work with the, uh, the kids who have less control. So what do you think is the next frontier? Now, how do you market this if a parent sees this now and says, you know what, I think it can help my child or a school system, how they engage it, is there a cost, how they get from where you are now to getting it into their living room? Well, we're working on uh, setting up pilot sites and, uh, and beta sites so that we can actually see what it, how well it works out in the field and what it takes to maintain it. Is it ready situation. then? So it's not quite ready yet to be No, we're still, we're still in the testing right. and we're still bringing together the parts to make it a deployable product because in order for it to work in the school systems and the clinics and even in the home, it has to be very robust, has to be very uh, simple and easy to use. And so we're doing a lot of work on the uh, software side and also on all the components to make it very turnkey. The, the therapist or the teacher can just turn it on and easily set up the different sessions and then be able to, to go through it. All right, we've got to turn that key off now to go to the next segment. It sounds like a very promising development. We'll have you back on when you continue to tweak it. All right, Thanks thank you for your time. Folks, when we come back, we'll have an autism advocate, Sarah Reed. We'll talk about other developments on the autism front. You are watching the Stan Simpson Show. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, too.